So hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's time to talk about the end of The Ones Who Live. We're going to talk about the finale and we're going to do an overall kind of overview of the season. I have so many points on this episode and this show. Oof. First of all, yeah, I know I'm blonde now. Okay, I was trying something new. I don't know how I feel about it. I've been blonde many, many, many times before. This time of year, I, always, I just want to change. I just, I look at myself and I'm like, summer, we need to be summer. And then I bleach my hair and I'm like, did we need to be summer that bad? I'm not that sure. I'm probably going to go slightly darker. I'm going to do a slightly darker blonde. Ah. Uh, and I did just wake up a few minutes ago, so it's kind of all over the fucking place. I could have at least styled it. I just got out of bed and was like, do my makeup and we're good to go. Probably could have styled it a bit better. Just wanted to say thank you guys so much for the love and the support and the reaction videos. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed them. Listen, I've been on this Walking Dead train for, oh my God, I don't even know how long. I started making videos uh, just before the Negan lineup. That's when I started doing reaction videos. And since then, I did that for all of The Walking Dead. I did reactions for all the spin-offs as well. I did Fear. I did Daryl's show. I did uh, World Beyond. I did Dead City. Um, I do cast and crew interviews and stuff. So like I've been I've been on the walking dead train for what feels like forever. Okay. But it's always so nice and surprising when new people come along and find my channel and they're like, oh my God, you're obsessed. I love it. And I'm like, yes, hello. <laughs> Welcome to my fucking cave where I dwell and just freak out about stuff. And it always blows me away when people take the time to write like nice comments and stuff because that means, that means a lot. It might take like f five minutes out of your day, not even to watch a video and then leave a comment but you know to the person on the other side of the camera it means a lot on the other side of the screen so thank you very much for all the love on those videos if you enjoyed the reactions and you want to see the more extended versions all of the extended reactions are up on patreon for the ones who live episodes one to six of the ones who live all the extended reactions are up on patreon so the link to that's in the description if you want to check out some more content i don't know i don't even know <sighs> my brain i've got brain fog i think it's because of so many thoughts bouncing around like ping pong balls you know, it's like those little bouncy balls that you just let go. That's what's going on up in here at the moment. But yeah, the link to my Patreon is in the description down below. There's a bunch of content over there. The extended Telltale's The Walking Dead gameplay also goes up over there. As well as a bunch of like Patreon exclusive videos. Like I'm doing reactions for uh, Angel, Supernatural, Handmaid's Tale, True Blood, which is, oh, that is one sexy show. Twitter, Instagram, anywhere else you can find me is also linked down below. Let's get into it with, we're going to talk about the finale first. And then we'll go and we'll talk about the season as an overview. I have notes. I have a whole notepad open here with a bunch of notes. Okay. So the finale. I loved it. I thought... I thought it was a really, really clean and cohesive way to end the show. This show, I said it in my reaction. Some people disagreed with me. Some people agreed with me. I watched this show for Rick and Michonne. The CRM, Beale, Thorne, all the other side plots, all the other side storylines, Jadis. They were just like an added bonus. It's been so long since we lost Rick on the bridge, since Michonne left The Walking Dead. I, all I wanted was them. I wanted them all the time, on screen, in my face, kissing, smooching, making out. And the show gave us that. It showed us them find each other. It showed us the growing pains of trying to figure out who we are now. How are we going to work together? Are we too different to work? The answer is no, they're perfect because they are, oh my God, they might be my favourite on screen couple of all time. Um, but I thought it was handled really, really well, really delicately. And the finale then ending with the family reuniting. All I wanted from this show was to see them all get back together. I said it multiple times. I thought that's maybe too dreamer. Maybe that's asking too much. You know, will we get it? I Probably not, but I want it. When they got off that helicopter and RJ and Judith were running towards them. I loved it. The small details like RJ wearing Coral's hat. RJ's boots looking like Rick's boots. Them just embracing and hugging. And, and Rick, one of my favourite little details from this whole episode was Rick hanging back when uh, Michonne ran to hug both the kids. She reunites with them and Rick kind of stands back because Rick has been missing a lot longer than Michonne has been. So they would obviously run to Michonne, their mother, because they have the most memories of her. They remember her the most. Um... They haven't seen their dad in a while. Ju Judith hasn't seen her dad in a while. RJ has never met his father. So seeing that moment of Rick standing back kind of with uncertainty, like waiting to be invited in, waiting for Michonne to have her moment with the kids and then be introduced to his son. Oh my God, I thought that was so beautiful. So I thought that ending it there was absolutely perfect because it is leaving it open-ended. I said it in my reaction video. I was like, come to delusional town with me. Come on, get aboard the fucking crazy train. There could be a season two. 
They didn't say it was going to be like a one season off thing, right? But it was supposed to be originally three movies and then they gave us the miniseries. And the miniseries, content-wise, running time would add up to three films, right? So we did get what we were promised. I thought it was fantastically done. But it did end in a way that's like, it didn't feel final, final. Do you know what I mean? Because if it was final, final, I feel like they would have gone back inside the Commonwealth. They would have gone home, home. And they would have like met up with characters like Ezekiel, characters that we haven't seen in a while. But we didn't do that. Do you know what I mean? There wasn't a big grand homecoming where we got invited back into our home. We met up with all of our familiar faces. So because we didn't get that, I'm kind of like, okay, that could have been a filming thing. Maybe they couldn't get the cast back. I understand. But I'm like, yeah, that would have been final, final though. Do you know what I mean? If we didn't get a season two, it did end very well. It ended absolutely beautifully in a fine way that tied up all the loose ends. We could see more of them in further spin-offs. I mean, Dial Dixon's going strong. Dead City's going strong. I have a feeling they're going to pull... They're going to pull something where they all come together in like a movie or a huge fucking project. A one-off new mini-series where all of the worlds collide. They'll bring it back all into one. Maybe they might do a final six-episode season of The Walking Dead or something. I don't see them like filtering out season by season. Do you know what I mean? So I don't see them ending The Ones Who Live with season one, ending Daryl Dixon with season two, ending Dead City with season two. I can see them putting them all back together and ending it there. That's my opinion though. Or that's my, my little working theory. Could be wrong. Probably is. I'm so often wrong about everything. Yeah, regarding this episode, another thing I really loved was the flashbacks. I loved the flashbacks. Oh my God, showing me characters I hadn't seen in a while. They, they flashed Ezekiel up on screen and I was not ready. It attacked me. It hit me right in the crotch of my feelings. Beautiful. Something else as well is the hand holding hand holding in the helicopter the scene where his hands are trembling when they're on the way home and Michonne steadies him she steals him she puts her hand over his and she's like we got this you are gonna be fine and that's something as well that throughout the season I loved watching I loved watching that develop that Rick has become like she said to him you become the soldier you know you're standing in line like a fucking soldier and watching him try to find his old self or this new version of the old him Michonne helping him he I think Andy played that absolutely perfectly and I, I've seen a bit of discourse about that online people making fun of Rick or saying like why is he like this because he's dealt with trauma he's dealt with years of being separated from his family he had to cut his fucking hand off to try and get away from the situation that he was in and then trying to slip back into this old life that you fought so hard to get back to that once you get it it's like oh my god what do I do now this was like a pipe dream all along but now I have it what do I do what's the next step so I thought that was played beautifully the scene with Beale as well the final scene with Beale where he tells him oh yeah like I killed someone with my teeth again there's there's been subtle throwbacks throughout the entire show to all six episodes and I, I loved that one. I loved that. Watching Rick like reminisce like, oh yeah, there was a time I did something so fucked up. I can't believe I haven't thought about that in a while. I feel like if that were me, I'd think about that at least once a day. You know, I'd be biting into an apple and I'd be like, oh my God, these teeth have killed a man. Beale as well is another thing that, listen, again, I tuned into the show for Rick and Michonne. So I'm not all that mad that we didn't get a whole lot of him. But at the same time, I do feel like he was somewhat underutilized as a character. It, they kind of took the fear approach. Where they gave us like a villain, they gave us a clear cohesive bad guy in the form of the CRM and in the form of Beale. But they didn't track it out. It's not like, oh, like he's going to be around for fucking years. They got in, dealt with him and got out. I have no problem with him dying in episode six. I thought the fight scene between him and Rick was comical. And him as a walker was something to behold. He was pulling all kinds of shapes, throwing all kinds of shapes around the place when he was walking around. He was doing the thriller hands. You know what I mean? When he was a walker fight, he was doing the, the, the fucking thriller hands walking around. <laughs> so I'm not mad that we lost him in episode six. I just do feel like we could have done with a small bit more screen time for him. And I kind of felt similarly for Thorne as well. I mean, Oak 4, I don't even think it made it out of episode one. Uh, but Thorne could have used a bit more screen time. Maybe it could have benefited from an, ep an extra episode or two. I feel like if this had been an eight episode season, it would have been perfect. It would have had a little bit more time to breathe. You could have maybe dove into some other things. Um, it felt very tight and cohesive as a six episode season. I just think that maybe if they had an ep extra episode somewhere, you could have allocated extra time throughout the episodes to other storylines or other things. Um, I understand a lot of people are saying like, oh, the CRM fell like straight away. No, it didn't. The CRM, like it has all of World Beyond explaining the origins and the backstory and the other characters are playing the CRM. And it was also, it was mentioned in other shows, but like, it didn't just fall straight away. It was throughout the whole, from when Rick left the bridge, he went to the CRM. 
We just didn't see that. Do you know what I'm saying? Stop it. That's not a thumbs up. I'm not happy that he left the bridge. It's like the CRM has been around a while and it, it was there for the whole six episodes of the season. You know, you kind of have to end the season with them defeating the big bad. That's the formula of a show, especially like an apocalypse show. I've seen people like saying that the fight scene between Thorne and Michonne was cringy or whatever. The, what is it? Love doesn't die. I did love that line. I thought it was a very strong line. Um, but I do feel like Thorne kind of gave up really quickly. She was like, love isn't real or whatever. And Michonne was like, fuck you, love doesn't die. Just because your love didn't come for you. Fuck off. My man and me are just built different. And then she just, Thorne just kind of sat there like, yeah, okay. You know? Something as well that like has stuck with my head is that he, uh, Bill gave an, exp uh, an expiry date on humans. Right? So he told Rick when he was giving him the Echelon briefing that there's like what 13 or 14 years there's a certain time period left for humans and that eventually we're all going to die out if the walkers keep going the way they're going that this going to take over the world people will die he sounded like a youtube <laughs> walking dead enthusiast he was like i've done the math rick okay i've done the math walk with me right come over to my mood board i'll show you humans have this much time left by my calculations and then you know we destroyed the crm and the other one took over what is it the c crp or something it was called i don't know Someone else took over and now people are allowed free rooms. People are allowed to move between communities. We saw the helicopters bringing Rick and Michonne back home. So obviously they trust them enough to let the helicopters and the people come near their family. Who knows? Maybe we're going to move some of our people, you know, between places. We might not all stay in the one place. I wonder where the Grimes family are going to live now, given the fact I guess we have options. But like, there's an expiry date for humans. So what are we going to do about that? Was like was Beale the only one that knew this? And every time he gave this talk to whoever he was like letting into the fold, I presume most of them died, and that's why he had to keep giving people the echelon briefing. Do you know what I mean? Or he might have sent them to different outposts. So maybe there are people out there with that knowledge, but like if there is an expiry date for humans, what are we gonna do about that? Hey, are we are we gonna like look into that a bit? See what we can do. The hair is flopping. Please stop flopping. So that has me stressed. The fact that like, we just didn't really get an answer to that. We just kind of moved on. Again, guess that leaves room for other storylines to take up, take place other places. Other people that are probably going to rise up in the ranks in this new CRM, new improved CRM, that it's like, nothing's ever perfect. You know, and I do think we'll see that explored a little bit. And the fact that Beale purposefully put into that speech that we have spies like everywhere in the world, not just America. Who do we know that has left America? Shagged off in a little boat to another country. Daryl he's fucked off to France could there be people that are like in on that over there that we meet that I, I, see what I mean it all ties in it all connects and ties in Daryl as well is another thing that was brought up a lot Daryl and Morgan people were expecting to see uh, pop-ups now I do agree I thought that we might have had some cameos I was thinking maybe Morgan and Silas because Silas was in the world beyond he had his whole storyline in that show and then he joined the CRM isn't that how he ended that show so I thought, well, if he, if he joined the CRM and we're going to the CRM, it makes sense that we might see him. We didn't. He never once popped up. Morgan left fear to come join Rick. He said that he was going looking for Rick. And again, we didn't see him either. Now, maybe that was just a way to tie up his storyline in fear that it's like he's gone off in search of Rick. Again, the door is still open for future seasons of shows. Maybe um, Tales of the Walking Dead might deal with something like that. We might get a whole Morgan exclusive episode of Tales of the Walking Dead which I really think listen I've said it so many times before about that show they dropped the ball on Tales it was a ballsy show they took chances but the whole idea is it's, a, it's an anthology show they can do an episode about anyone anywhere you could fill in so many gaps with the season 2 of uh, Tales of the Walking Dead if they focus more on characters that we know and that we've seen rather than new characters like I think I really think if they did a 6 episode season and they did four episodes of people that we know and two episodes of just random one shots of people we've never met before. It would really, it would work. It really would work, in my opinion. But that's just because I really loved Tales as a TV show. Another point I've seen people making is the, uh, oh, it's the CRC, is the new people who took over. Okay. Um, yeah, so the no Silas, the no Morgan thing. I did say that I feel like we didn't need cameos in this season. If we got one, it would be great, but we didn't necessarily need them because it's Rick and Michonne's story. You know, and if you try and jam pack too many familiar faces in, then it becomes who are we going to see this week as opposed to what are Rick and Michonne going to do this week? So I understand keeping it the way they did. I thought the Father Gabriel tie in was nice. I really did like that. I loved seeing him again. Jade is sneaking off 
to meet up with him and then you know Jada's getting her in as well that was fucking huge she's been a part of the universe for so long that saying goodbye to her and seeing her leave was oh my god you know and I gave her shit we all gave her shit but it is what it is she was that kind of character you weren't really supposed to love her but I feel like they did a good job at making you feel for her almost making you feel for her with how she ended um, I liked getting to see her art studio as well. But yeah, something that other people were bringing up was the no variants thing. So we dealt with variants in the final season of The Walking Dead. Uh, we've seen them in Daryl Dixon. Did we see them in Dead City? I think we did. Well, we saw that weird centipede creature living down in the sewers. The fucking, the Walker King or the Rat King, whatever he was called. But we didn't see any variants as far as I know in this. I mean, we saw the fire walkers, which were sickening. And fire is another thing I love. This season had its aesthetic fire. Fire, flames, red colours, passion. I mean, red is the colour of love. It's the colour of violence. It's just beautiful, the aesthetics. Uh, and we had Nash, of course, handing over uh, the lighter, which, you know, we did. We got, we went kaboom at the end in order to save everything, which it, it that still makes me laugh. Things like that where I'm like, they lived. I know why they lived because they were hid under the tarp. that was like full of water or something. And everyone else just got blown to smithereens. Um, but we didn't see variants. Again, I guess they were just focusing on Rick and Michonne's story, the aspect of that. So I'm not mad about that, but that is a point people have been bringing up and I do understand. They threw it into the last season of The Walker Dead. We've seen it in other spin-offs. It would have made sense to have seen like a, a, a wicked variant, like like an in-your-face variant somewhere. Uh, but I'm not all that mad that we didn't. There's still time in other shows for them. Something that did, that did kind of piss me off was Thor not knowing that Michonne was Rick's woman. So Rick goes to Thorne's room in an earlier episode and is like, oh, I'm bringing in someone like to make sure she's okay or whatever. And then Thorne goes out on missions with Rick and Michonne and doesn't piece together that, that they're together. Like, how did she not see that? And you see her, she kind of pieces it together in the last episode and she says it to Michonne then. And it's like, I'm sorry, you're just figuring this out now? Talk about not being able to read a room. But yeah, I thought it was a solid end. I love, I really did love the ending. Parts of it felt like they were glossed over and it did feel like it was a bit fast moving towards the end. But like, at the same time, it wasn't dragged out. It didn't drag its heels. It didn't try and make itself into something it wasn't. It's a love story. The same way Dead City is about like revenge and familial love. So family love. It's about Maggie trying to find Herschel. That's what all season one was about. And then you bring in all the fucking side quests to Croat, Negan, all that shit. But the 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 basis the the heart of dead city is maggie's love for her kid and hatred and revenge and um not being able to get over those negative feelings between between her and negan do you know what i'm saying that's the vibe of dead city daryl dixon the vibe was france the vibe was prophets the vibe was kind of like ellie and joel situation of he, he you know he try, he's trying to bring laurent from point a to point b Fear had its own aesthetic every goddamn season. But like, I feel like the spin-offs in a way, all of them have had their own vibe and they've all kind of been about like family, love, care and like trying to prepare for the future. So Daryl's trying to bring the prophet from A to B, Laurent, from A to B uh, because Isabel filled him in on the storyline and this could like help the future or at least help his future. Dead City, again, is kind of about the future. It's about Herschel, the children of the future, the ones who live. Michonne trying to find Rick to bring him home to their kids because the kids are the future. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like Dead Seed or I feel like The Ones Who Live was just drawn and and pushed forward and propelled so much by love that that was the overarching theme and it was the heart of the show. Um, and like I said earlier, like, you know, the aesthetic being fired at the title cards, the colour scheme was very fiery. You had Nat giving Michonne the lighter fire. Talk about his past, you know, burning things down. Again, Rick tells the story about his father burning down the farm. Rebirth. You know what I mean? It's just, it's it's beautiful. I love the aesthetic and the vibe of the season. Nat was absolutely a highlight. Oh my God. Every time I think of that motherfucker, I'm just, what a character. To be able to make you feel that much in one episode. But yeah, touching back on Daryl then. People were saying like, I want the Daryl reunion with Rick. Or I want the Morgan reunion with Rick. There's a lot of people that missed Rick. There's a lot of people that loved Rick and cared for him. Um, there's a lot of people that would have wanted to reunite with him and seen him again. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, his wife and fucking kids come first. The Listen, don't get me wrong. The bromance between Rick and Daryl was one of my favourite on-screen like couplings in history. Um, Andrew and Norman had such incredible chemistry on screen. You felt the brotherly love. You felt the connection between the two of them that they would do anything for each other. They fought like brothers. They fell out like brothers. Argued like brothers. But like... 
yeah, I want to see them reunite too. Absolutely. But like, that's okay for a later date, for an episode, an episode somewhere down the line in, in Daryl's show or if we get a season two of The Ones Who Live. The first and foremost, most pressing reunite scene would have been with his kids. And we got it. I've seen a lot of people as well bringing up the fact that um, the scene now in Daryl's show makes a lot of sense where Carol's on the walkie to Daryl and she, she says, you know, something and then came back. Now it's, I guess, Rick and Michonne came back. So that was the thing she was trying to get through to Daryl. So I, I like that tying in those little things. One thing that's kind of pissed me off a little bit is I've seen people switching up. I've seen people that were like singing the praises of the show switch up a little bit on the finale and take the piss and be like, oh, the epic love story saved the day. Lol. And it's like, what? yeah, what did you think was going to happen? The whole thing has been about love. It's about how the love can conquer all. It was, it was, it was said in nearly every episode. I mean, Jada said it. Michonne said it. Um, you had it said like time and time again that like together we can do anything you know and maybe like manifesting and gaslighting yourself that's what I'd do definitely if I was Michonne I would have been the absolute master of gaslighting I'd have been like of course we can do anything like of course we're going to be fine and I would have just manifested that shit into existence which is kind of what she did <laughs> um, but of course they were going to save the day of course they were going to you know I mean it was touch and go there for a minute I thought we might have lost Rick because they gave us two cop out scenes where I thought Hello. And I can understand that the finale wouldn't have been for everyone. And I knew as I was watching it as well, people people are going to be split on this, definitely. Because it really did lean into everything that, that I wanted to see, at least. And that a large part of the fandom wanted to see. Um, and I knew that, that certain other people wouldn't be happy with that. And it's like, you're totally entitled to your own opinion. But seeing people like switch up and like be mean or like have hot takes just to seem edgy or just to seem... I don't know, just to get engagement or like retweets or like likes and comments or something. It's just kind of fucking weird. And it really makes me sad as well when I see the fandom fighting. Do you know what I mean? So if when I see like inter-fandom fighting, people fighting over like whose show was better, whose show did better. I mean, it's like we all love the same universe. We like different characters in the same universe, but like you don't need to drag another show down. Do you know what I mean? I feel like everything about this show just screamed Emmys. I feel like they're Andy... And Denai could very well win an Emmy for this show for a number of different reasons. And in my opinion, it was the strongest. It had the best writing. I mean, Denai, the episode that Denai wrote was probably one of my favourites because of, I said it in the episode, it, it felt like you were watching a play. It felt like you were watching a theatre production, which I adored. And it makes sense given Denai's theatre background. But I really do feel like they're going to be recognised for this season, for the work they did on the show, because it is fucking impeccable. That being said, Daryl Dixon's my favourite character ever. You know, I loved Dead City. I thought it was a fun, it was a fun ride. I think season two is going to be stellar. I cannot wait. But at the same time, in my opinion, it, it's going to take an actual God-given masterpiece to top this season for me, to top the ones who live. I don't, I, in my opinion, it's, it's the best The Walking Dead has been in years. But that doesn't mean I'm going to go around taking the piss out of like, I don't know, um, Dead City or like Daryl's show or Fear because I'm like they all have their strong points they all have their built in fan bases people love them for different reasons you're allowed to enjoy more than one show at a time and I've seen like a lot of arguing between um, the different shows and between the different fans and I'm like lads can we not now that being said I did see some very strange comments under my reaction video that just will not fly with me okay I saw some people taking the piss out of RJ uh, the actor and I'm like okay one I know Coral and um, Judith were also both child actors. But people have been coming hard after this kid since he first made his appearance in the show, making fun of him, being mean to him. He's a fucking child. Go easy. I thought he was fine. He had like two lines anyway. I don't understand why people are getting so worked up and so fucking bitter and violent over it. There's also some weird comments regarding Rick and like his personality this season and him being like a total family man. Again, I don't... I. Did you want a season of just like action hero running from thing to thing? Because go watch The Walking Dead if you want that. Rick did that for seasons in The Walking Dead. This show really did feel like a more nuanced kind of like introspective look at a character, at a person. What drives them? What happens when everything goes wrong and they pass their glory days? Because he had seasons on The Walking Dead of being the action hero, of swooping in, saving the day, fucking up here and there because my God, he did. And this, this was just different. This felt different. It felt like a character study of, well, what comes after? What happens when you lose everything? When you don't necessarily have anything to spur you on anymore? 
and again that's not a personal attack on anybody who didn't enjoy the finale or people who had like their little thoughts and things to pick apart because again I always say leave your comments I want to hear what you think but of course you do always get those toxic few that will say the craziest most out of pocket shit just to try and get engagement and I'm like no that shan't go down here and I, I've loved reading people's takes and going through my comment section going through Twitter seeing what people are saying about it it seems like it was mostly um, a very positive season one people loved it the finale seems to be the only episode really that is people like severely split. People saying they wanted to see more of the CRM, they wanted to see more of Beale, they wanted whatever. And it's like, I can understand that again. I said that in the reaction as well. I was like, whoa, that was like a really quick end to Beale. Holy shit. But again, Beale was never really the focal point of the season. The focal point was Rick and Michonne finding each other. Where do we go from here? That was the focal point and everything else was just like the story that happened around them. You know? Um, I just think it was so well written, so well acted. Deny and Andy are two of probably my favourite actors ever and it has just been so beautiful to see them get the flowers they deserve with this show I remember I met Denai a few years ago at a Walker Stalker and I remember just looking at her and being like do you ever meet someone and their energy is just so fucking special I've loved Michonne for years but like meeting her in real life was like what one of the most nervous I think I've ever been meeting anyone from anything I was so anxious my hands were shaking I had to hold my own hand in front of me because my hands were shaking so bad um <laughs> but they are just such both of them are such incredibly talented actors and I'm so glad they got their chance to shine with this show and it was just so beautifully done again it wasn't without its flaws there's certain things like I've pointed out throughout the throughout this video there's certain things here and there that I'm like yeah like you know Silas not turning up or Morgan not turning up I understand why people would have a problem with that even though it wasn't a cameo show you know what I mean it wasn't billed as that it wasn't like who are we going to see this week Father Gabriel was given to us as like a parting present for Jadis I guess I understand why people would be pissed at the CRM ending the way it did and like being resolved the way it did but again in my opinion that just worked for me I liked it I liked how it was tied up I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of Beale just because we didn't have a lot of screen time with him and he's a great actor but at the same time Fuck him. <laughs> He's the villain. Bye bye. We're not wasting time on him. It's, it's it's over and done with. Yeah, that's it, I guess. What did you guys think? What did you guys feel worked, didn't work, that you liked, that you disliked? It's funny because I don't think I've seen a Walking Dead universe show be this discussed, this talked about, this uh, broken down and dissected on the internet in a very, 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 very long time. I feel like it really reignited the fire that has been dwindling, I guess, in the Walking Dead universe. I mean, it's my favourite universe of my favourite characters like I said I loved Dead City I loved Daryl Dixon I loved Fear um, really enjoyed Tales World Beyond wasn't really for me but I still liked it every show does their own thing brings its own special spark but this has just been next level special you know and it's funny because a lot of people are like I wanted to see more of the CRM I, we didn't get enough time with it and it's like well then go watch World Beyond the CRM is like the whole plot point for the two seasons of that show pretty much in and, in and about but let me know your thoughts let me know what, what you liked and disliked like I said but that is it for this chat this talk you guys thank you for watching for commenting for sending love all that I really do appreciate it that is all for now and I will talk to you all soon I'm still living in Delusionalville I'm still manifesting we're going to get a season 2 even though someone yelled at me in the comments for my reaction video and they were like we're not getting a fucking season 2 and I was like Jesus Christ you're being kicked off the delusional train, my friend. You can't sit with us.